receive strata. And so I want us to pay attention to what he says when he says, in the time when the kings go forth to battle. And my sister here will elaborate on it. Yes, sorry. Everything I touch sometimes. Is... So this is basically more so of a discussion. So I don't want it to, for it to be like we're the only ones standing up here and talking. You guys have to be engaged. If there's anything that you would like to say, just raise your hand. We'll give you the microphone. You guys can say it. So let's look at verse one. If you guys could look down at your Bible, and I hope everybody is looking down at their Bibles. Let's read verse one. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. So when after reading verse one, you have to ask yourself, what was David still doing in Jerusalem? The Bible specifically says, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth into battle, meaning that this was more of a practice. So let's think about it like this. You, have, you as a king, you're a leader, and you're in the leadership position, and you're sending all your men out there. They could be dying, you don't know that. You just get reports. Be hungry. You don't know that. You're just getting reports. Why aren't you there at battle? What happened to David that he got so comfortable that while his people, the people who look up to him, the people who love him, who are like, oh, praise King David, he's done all these things for him. What happened to his heart? What happened to his life that he got so comfortable that he wanted to just stay home and sleep? Because, and I know he was sleeping. Because he was. Because if you look at number uh, verse two, it said, "And it came in an evening time that David arose from his bed." I don't know how many times it'll be eight thirty, nine o'clock. I will get a call from my father. I'll be why you still in bed? I'm tired, and it's still the morning time. But no, 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 Mr. David over here. It was evening time. That was when he was deciding to get up from his bed. <laughs> I think that's what we still do today, right? No. You know, for example, like last year we just had recess. Woo! Um, Woo! Amen? Woo! Amen. Amen. Right. We had reset. And maybe just a week after people felt so spiritual mm -hmm. and so uplifted. Mm -hmm. And they decided to put everything away and they just go for a stroll in the garden, just like David did. What garden? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we do the same thing as Christians. Um, we are always in constant war. We're always in constant battle. The Bible says that the spirit fights against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And so that's how you know who a Christian is. A Christian is someone that is always fighting. I'm not talking about going to fight Elizabeth or who else do I know here? Oh, yeah. You're my homie. I would have been that. But we always have to be in constant battle. If you're not fighting, you're not a Christian. Can we say it together? If you're not fighting, you're not a Christian. There is no sitting on the fence. There is no gray areas. Um, there is no, oh, um, a Christian on vacation. Um, there is no vacationing till we get to heaven. Can we say that? I certainly want to pause and ask anybody if they have an example to share with the group of a moment in time when they had a lapse in their battle. Because the way that I put it for myself, and I have to keep reminding myself, is that every day I go, when you wake up, you have to get into battle mode. Because by the end of the day, you don't know what the devil's going to throw at you. He could be chilling today, chilling tomorrow, chilling for two months, and then or the next moment, he just like, and I'm sitting there on the floor like, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, help me. What did I do? What did I do wrong? God is just like. So turn to someone sitting next to you and say, do battle. Do battle. Do battle. I can't hear you. Do battle. One more time. Do, do battle. battle. I'll say it. Verse 2. And it came to pass in even time that David arose off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Amen. And from the roof, the Bible says, he saw a woman. Say saw. 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 Again. Saw. Say see. See. Amen. Yes. <laughs> you know,
know, when I was a kid, I was just sharing with Happy Girl. When I was a kid, we had this Guinness commercial. How many of you know, know Guinness? I know. See, I know. See, whether you know Guinness, it doesn't take away your Christian points. You know Guinness. <laughs> you know Guinness, raise your hand. Alright, okay. So, I don't know when you were born, but Guinness had this really catchy commercial. You know, when, when I was probably in like Jake, um, middle school. And so, I'm going to sing it. I'm going to sing it. Uh, it goes like, see it, do, 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 feel it, do, do, taste it, do, 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 know it. Right? They give you the whole schema of the process, but you can also learn something from it. Don't go watching Guinness Commission. <laughs> same as I say, but Kwame said you should watch. Anyway, so it says, see it. And what does the Bible say? It says, David did what? Saw. Saw. He saw a woman. So we want to ask the question that what are you looking at? Look at someone and tell them, what are you looking at? <laughs> Look at another person say, what are you looking at? <laughs> Look behind you and tell somebody, what are you looking at? <laughs> I hope it's good things. <laughs> and so we're going to, Abigail is going to go here. We're going to go to one random person and then I'm going to go over there and talk to one random person. If your lottery ticket is picked, you haven't won a million dollars, we're going to ask you what are some of the things that we look at that as Christians we shouldn't be looking at. It might not necessarily be a bad thing, okay? It might not have to be pornography. It doesn't have to be watching a girl's booty, okay? But. We just want to ask you some of the things, because you are so deeper life and holy, you're not going to do any of these things, amen? Alright, so let's think about some of the things that we look at um, that take away from our spiritual strength, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so ladies first. Okay, is there anybody who wants to uh, raise their hand, a kind madam or gentleman? Oh, they're not going to raise you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to call on you guys? Come on, we're young adults. Oh, I don't know who you are, but I'm looking right at you and you looked at me, so I saw you seeing me seeing you, so... I was going to pick on him. Okay, go, we're ready. Go ahead, I'll still find somebody. Okay, uh... Okay, uh, one thing we look at, and we shouldn't, uh, apart from what you said, that's the girl's booty. <laughs> one, thing, one thing we do look at is uh, other people's success and other people's life in the covenant.
that I don't like cake, but there are a lot of people who do, so I'm gonna use cake as an example. Or well, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna use clothes as an example because I love clothes. So there's this cute outfit, and I keep walking past it in the mall. I go over here and I'm like, Lord, I know I got bills to pay. I can't buy this. <laughs> I got phone bills, I got this, I got that. I keep looking at that outfit, oh my god, it's so cute. And then, I'll, like, I'll go past it, and I'll come back, and I keep thinking about it. The image keeps popping up in my head, and I keep thinking about how cute it is. Before I know it, I go into that store, and I'm coming out with a shopping bag, because I didn't immediately run away from the temptation. I walked past it, I kept going back, I kept going back. It's a struggle, it's like a tug of war. And if you're not careful, it's going to entangle you when it's rains. So that's when we all need to, and, and you notice one other thing about David. David was a child of God. So we're talking, about, we're talking to children of God here. And if you're here, you haven't given your life to Christ. You know, I said that I preached yesterday. And as we've been talking, you can give your life to Christ right now. Amen. 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 But nobody here can say, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. If we be very honest with ourselves. Amen. Amen. Um, I know I've shared the story before, but... Um, I always like to say it because I feel like I should say it again. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I used to have a girl problem. Okay, I think I still do with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, but after I became born again, Amen. Amen. Like um, we're on campus and a bunch of my friends, you know, they know Kwame Sage, you know, born again, Jesus Lord, Lord, Amen. Amen. And so they were like, oh. I mean, you know what, we're going to go to this bar and, you know, we're just going to go hang out, talk about African issues. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, sure. Because if you're a child of God, your friends are going to know whether you're for real or you're not. Yeah. Amen. So even when they're going to ask you to go to things like that, they're going to be very careful when they are doing it. They have to find another way to get you to go. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, as I was going, I had the hint, hint that, oh, I mean, maybe you shouldn't be going, there, going to this place. Long story short, at the end of the day, I ended up getting a lap dance. <laughs> okay, and nobody told me to go there. Okay. Oh, sorry. Nobody told me to go there. And so I always tell my peers, I always tell, when I meet children of God, I always say, do not put yourself in awkward positions. Do not put yourself in awkward situations. You're going to come back to God and say, oh God, I'm really sorry, but, you know, we're going to come to the next point, the deep. <laughs> What's done is what? Done. And I want us to look at that in 2 Samuel chapter 11. I'm going to read from verse 4. Once again, I'll read very quickly for us. I'm ready. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her cleanliness and was returned unto her house, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I'm pregnant. That's the dreaded. <laughs> well, it depends on whether you're married or not. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so David got that message too. And there are so many things that we do in, in our lives. And sometimes I talk to, when, when we, when, let's say we go to Youth Fest, or we talk, we go to some of these programs where there are younger people than us. And then you say, oh, when are you going to give your life to Christ? You know, I gotta have fun, you know, I gotta go to college, you know, I have to do all these things. You know, then after that, I'm gonna give my life to Christ. But there are certain things that you do in your life that you might grow up to become the general overseer. You might grow up to become the original overseer. You might grow up to become someone very militant for God, right? And praise the Lord for that. But you can't go back and repair those things, amen. And so when you have the opportunity and you have the chance to give your life to Christ, to avoid all that wahala, I think it's a really good investment for you to do right now. Amen. Amen. And then build up your Christian life and your relationship with God right from the very own start. And you all know what happened to David. He ended up having so many kids, and the kids started killing each other, and Absalom came after him, and then Absalom ended up having to get killed. When you're committing a sin, we always deceive ourselves by saying, oh, it's just me. 
it's just my life. You know, it's just me. I don't care what anybody thinks. You know, you're my parents, you know, you think, you know, you lived your life, you had your fun. Like maybe Pastor Dada was saying yesterday with the Bobby Brown pants and, you know, the Afro. Oh, this is my time. This is my time. I need to also have fun and then hang out with my friends and do everything that I need to do. But what you forget is that one day you're also going to be old. Amen. And then why does the Bible say that, remember your creator in the days of old, when the evil days come not? Is it the time when you're using a walking stick that you're going to be serving God? No. You're not going to realize and experience how true God is. And if maybe you're here, you feel like you're single and you're lonely. You're not going to find true love in any other way than in Jesus Christ. And so why don't you experience that love right now? Why do you pass your heart from one person to another than really experiencing true love? I kind of digressed over there, but bear with me. I'll over back to you. Yes, so I believe we've covered the deed, correct? Yes. <laughs> so number five is the cover-up. What are you hiding? Mm-hmm. What are you hiding? You know, and not necessarily like when you go behind closed doors and do. And let me use a silly example. I don't know who can relate with me, but when my mom would cook, I would take something and I'll go behind the door and I'll yes, eat it. Girl. So it's not like. I mean, I was going to eat the soup eventually, but I just wanted the meat. <laughs> it was my favorite, so I would just take it, I would go behind the door and hide it. Uh, I would go behind the door and hide and eat the meat. And she knew, just like God knows exactly what you're hiding, she knew, oh, I've been eating my meat. <laughs> and so God knows you're hiding something. You don't want me to know, but I know. And you know who else knows? You and the devil. There are always three people that know. So the next time um, myself or yourself we face with a temptation, always know there are already three witnesses that will be called to the stand. One is who? God. 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 The other person is who? Yourself. And the last person is who? The devil. The devil. So don't let us deceive ourselves. Amen. Amen. And in terms of that, we're going to read from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 4. <laughs> Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Amen. Amen. Are there any atheists in the house? A person who doesn't believe in God. Are there any atheists in the house? I know I've been an atheist on countless occasions. You know what uh, Abigail was talking about? That she would take the meat and then go behind the door, thinking that who is not there? No. Okay. The last time that I talked to that girl and there was no pastor, there was nobody there to know about it, who was there? God. A lot of us Christians behave like atheists. You don't have to say, I don't believe in God in order to be an atheist. They are Christian atheists. Can you say it with me? Christian atheists. So when we face with a decision, um, we always need to do, do I really? It's not, God, Jesus Christ said, said that they confess me with their mouths, but their hearts are what? Far away from me. It's not, it's not about me saying, oh, you know, I'm born again, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. All of that is just gibberish if I'm not following through with knowing that God is with me everywhere. Even as the Bible says, it says that everything is naked. Can we say the word naked? Naked. Plain, naked, as naked as it gets in the eyes of God. And so let's always pause to think, am I acting as an atheist or am I truly believing in God? Say, I believe in God. I believe in God. Say it like you believe in God. I, I believe, believe in God. God. That's, that's something I've never heard before. I'm gonna take that with me and put it in my pocket, a Christian atheist. Who would have thought? So, can we go to the, to the next, uh, yes. all right, so, everybody talks about... Has she done mixed mistakes too? she made some... It wasn't as much as King David, because if you look at the Bible, you know, nobody really blames Bathsheba. They're always talking about, David did this, David looked at her, David saw her, David wanted her, you know, like, it was always David, David. It was just like, oh, but Sheba came, Sheba let it happen. But the first 
point is the bath. Yeah, the bath. That's what happened. She, she was bathing. Wait, I shouldn't take showers. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. So, how do you see yourself? Let's look at Psalm 139, verse 1. She didn't pay attention to what was going on around her. And I have to think, how if David was in the palace on a rooftop, how close did she have to be to him in order for him to clearly see that she was taking a bath? He was long sighted. <laughs> <laughs> in 2020. Well, yeah. Maybe he had binoculars. Yeah. In that time. You'll be surprised. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so she wasn't really self-aware. And you know, that's not to say, like Mama said, that, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take showers, but you have to be self-aware of yourself or what's going on around you. Like, I'll use myself as an example. When I was in high school, I was very careful not to walk around certain hallways in my high school because I knew when I turned that corner, there was going to be a whole bunch of dudes standing around, just troubling my life. Hey, yo, Abigail, where are you going? Abigail, where are you, what you doing? What, like, leave me alone. I don't have any business with you. You don't have any business with me. I was very self-aware of myself, knowing that I am a girl, and they are men. And there are some men who are up to no good. And there are some women who are up to no good. I've seen some of them with my coral blue eyes. I've seen them. No, up to no good. So I think that Bathsheba's first fault was she wasn't covering herself as properly as she should. And so what was seen was saw. What should have been seen was saw. Would you like some? Yeah. And then um, one other thing that um, you want to ask yourself, and I want us all to, to say it all together. Who am I? Can we say it? Who am I? One more time. Who am I? One last time. Who am I? Okay, so how you see yourself is how you carry yourself. Can we say it again? How I see myself is how I carry myself. Okay, so there are two people that walk into this building. One is a CEO and one is a dumb man. One is a bum. Okay. Alright, I must be so weird. I shouldn't have used it. <laughs> so one is a bum, one is a CEO. The bum walks in with a three piece suit and a tie. The CEO walks in with Yeezys. <laughs> Who are you going to think is the CEO? The Yeezys. No, no, let's be more serious. Okay, let's say you have no concept of what Yeezys are. Okay. I mean, Yeezys are expensive. I know, but you didn't know, you didn't know what Yeezys are. Okay. Right. So somebody walks in. You know, tat all tattered up jeans, you know, the shirt is kind of ripped. And then the other guy walks in in a three-piece suit. Who are you going to think is a CEO? Three-piece suit. suit, right? You, the way you carry yourself tells the world a lot about your level of confidence, how you think, how you act. That's why it's always very difficult, right? And I want to reiterate the point that Pastor Dada made yesterday. To see somebody, sometimes, don't get me wrong, okay? Um, if you see me all tatted up, right, and then I walk into a place, first thing, even 
you want to lie to yourself that you're not judging me. Okay, but you're going to judge me one way or the other and say, oh, this is not a serious person. Then I come up to the podium and say, let's bow that head and pray like, Wait, what? <laughs> right? No body. Exactly. And so you want to be really careful how you carry yourself. Again, we're talking to Christians here. Okay, if I see somebody that is tatted up, um, maybe the person was tatted up before they became a Christian. I have no right to judge the person. Don't, don't get the point that I'm making. You do get the point I'm making? Okay, but you're a Christian. Right? But then you go and then let's say let's say you even believe in tattoos or whatever, right? And then maybe you are like Mike Tyson, you put it <laughs> like all over your face. Okay, it's really hard and I'll be very honest and sincere, it's really hard for you to convince me that you're a Christian because the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are who I find it hard to believe that the Holy Spirit will tell you to tattoo your face. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody here? Yes. I find it really hard to believe that the Holy Spirit will tell you to do a double piercing. I find it really hard to believe that the Holy Spirit will tell you to sag your pants. Thank you. Amen. I find it really hard that the Holy Spirit will tell you to expose your cleavage. Okay, Thank don't you. get me wrong. Don't get me wrong again. There are times that, you know, maybe, like he was saying, she was saying, you are not aware and maybe your dress just drops a little bit. Okay. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about deliberate things. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 start saying, Rapami said this, Rapami said that. But I sincerely find it really hard to believe some of these things. Amen. And so if you are truly, really, sincerely, the real Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about the bang, 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 bang. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Say holy. Holy. Holy one more time. Holy. One more time. Holy. The Holy Spirit. He leads you to do holy things. Amen. Amen. And whatever that will make somebody think less of you, I don't think that is from God. Amen. Amen. And so let's be very careful how we see ourselves. Now, let's go to the decision. So, the decision. What did Bathsheba decide to do? Because someone please tell me. Invitation. Pardon me. Yeah. Oh. If you would like to. So, the invitation. How many of us have had an invitation to a wedding, party, um, anything like that? Oh wow, some people have really bad social lives here. <laughs> okay, if you've never been to a party or a wedding, raise your hand. Oh, okay, that Why makes me so much better. <laughs> okay, so there's always going to be an invitation in your life for two things. An invitation to come to Christ, an invitation to sin. Again, there's no sitting on the fence with anything. Oh, we can save questions for later. I'm sorry. Um, so, I want us to read in 2 Samuel 11 verse 4. One last time. Um, actually, just look there. I'll just tell you what is there. Um, there's one word that the Bible uses when it talks of Bathsheba. It says, Bathsheba came in to David. Right? David sent the invitation to Bathsheba, and then Bathsheba the boy came. Sometimes there are very good intentions. See that, that, that phone number that you took? You were just calling to check up on the sister to see if her spiritual life is really good. <laughs> <laughs> and you meant it sincerely with all of your heart. Like you really wanted to follow up on the sister. Right? <laughs> see, you be sincere. You've done it before. I've done it before. <laughs> Okay, so that's from number. <laughs> All right. It, well, you meant to do something good, but sometimes good intentions don't always end up going the right way, right? So Bathsheba gets a call. Oh, King David wants to see you. It's like, ah, King David wants to see you. <laughs> Which was right. You were about to go. Oh, Ghana. <laughs> it's like, ah, the king wants to see me. Ah, okay, let me go. Then she probably dressed well, you know, good food, and then went there only to, you know, meet that. But let's see what somebody else also did. She had the right intentions, but it ended up going wrong, okay? So let's read Genesis 34, verse 1 and 2. Yeah. 
Alright, so for the sake of time, let's just narrate the story. Okay, so, <laughs> so Dinah, Dinah, okay, very plain language. Dinah was bored. Say bored. Bored. Dinah wanted to go out. Say go out. Go out. Dinah wanted to see. Say see. See. Dinah saw. Saw. Dinah was free. <laughs> okay, so it started very innocently, and you were all following along, right? Bam, 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 bam. So they got to the rape part. Sisters, you need to be really careful. You can't say that you are in a party with five dudes that are all drinking and heavily drunk. Mm. And then you're right in that center of that. You expect nothing to happen. They may not rape you. They may touch you in the wrong places. They may hug you in the wrong places. Someone might throw a kiss at you. Am I being real here? Very real. Am I being real? Yeah. Okay, this is, we finished talking about Bible. We're talking about reality now. <laughs> Don't put yourself in awkward places. Tell it to someone next to you. Don't put yourself. It started very innocently, but I yielded bad results. All right, so this is what I wanted to do before. That's something that I guess I was eager to talk about. So, the decision. The decision that she made was that she let it happen. And I want everybody to under, we could read Genesis 39, 6, verse, uh, 6 to 9, but we're not going to. So let's just talk about it, let's be real. The decisions that you make in life could impact, well, impact 2017. The, 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 the decisions that you make in life could impact you in such a way that you could not even foresee such a thing happening just because you made one small decision. And like, like I said, when you read the Bible and they're talking about 2 Samuel chapter 11, most of the things that they're saying, oh, David did, David did, but why did Bathsheba let that happen? Why couldn't she, you can look at um, the life of Joseph. Joseph, like my brother Carmen was saying, 17, no parents, in a strange land. And not only that, he was a slave, he had no rights. As a slave, you have no rights. All your rights are taken away from you. You listen, you say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, keep it moving. But he took that decision to, and the impact that it made for generations to come was a good impact. At the moment, it, it wasn't a good decision. In people's eyes, you, you got a woman, she was good, she has money, why don't you just sleep with her? But he said no, and he ran. Yeah, nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. One small decision ended up in something great. But Bathsheba made one small decision, and it ended up in bloodshed, the family being torn apart, all kinds of nonsense was going on. Vulnerability is understandable, and it's possible, but how will you respond to that vulnerability? And I'll use myself as an example. Back maybe a year or two ago, I did not have a backbone for many things. If someone said, oh, Abby, Let's go here. I'd be like, oh, I feel bad. Okay, and I'll just follow them. Today, as I'm standing here, if someone tells me, let's do this, I'm like, for what? No, I'm not going. Because I finally made that decision for myself that God said this, God said that, but you're saying this, and it's contrary to his word. So what am I going to do? I'm going to walk away from you. There's nothing that you can only do. We would only, things happen to you if you allow them to happen to you. There are things that you can stop from happening, but if you don't have a backbone, if you're vulnerable, things like what happened to Bathsheba, what happened to David's family could happen to you. Or worse, you don't know that. So vulnerability, if you have a vulnerable spirit, and you don't have a backbone to certain things, you need to learn how to stand your ground and walk away, because she had the ability to walk away. She could have. Yes, he was King David, but at the same time, what was David going to do? Throwing her into jail? Was he going to kill her because she didn't want to sleep with him? That doesn't seem like David's nature at all, does it? She could have walked away, but she just was like, okay. And then she ended up pregnant. And he wants to just throw in a caveat out there. Maybe, maybe when you were a kid, um, you know, maybe you, you had someone that you trusted, like an uncle figure that, you know, um, it's hard to talk about things like this. Maybe you got molested or something. That's not what we're talking about. Amen. Amen. We, we're talking about people that are actually grown up. 
And it's really unfortunate. If you went through something like that, Jesus is here and he will deliver you in Jesus' name. He'll help you through all the pain and the bad memories in Jesus' name. He'll help you and he'll save you and he'll deliver you in Jesus' name. And if you haven't ever sought help, um, seek help from someone. See one of our leaders. We have psychologists, clinical psychologists here. Um, we have doctors here, people that can help you through all of this. And God will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Next slide. Um, and so, what if you gave in, right? Um, we said so many things and it might feel like, oh, oh, look at all these people bashing us like their whole lives are perfect. <laughs> well, see me in chambers, I'll talk to you. <laughs> and I'm sure, I, I, and I know, because she told me. So, I know she also has a lot to tell you too, amen. amen. And so, um, we're not perfect people, um, we're just people that have been saved by grace, amen. amen. And we're just trying to tell you that even if you've been in a place where you've given in, or you, you turned away from God. Maybe you, you know so many truths in your head, but it hasn't really reached your heart, and you keep falling in and giving in, and you know you, you use your vulnerability as an excuse to use to, to, to sin. Um, God is also willing to save you. And we just want to look at what David did in 2 Samuel. Um, we want to read from verse 12, um, chapter 12, verse 13. Um, and I'm just going to paraphrase. Basically, David said this, I have sinned. Can we say it together? I yes. say Until you get to a point where you can say those three words, you've not even started the journey to salvation. You need to acknowledge that you have sinned. Your sin might, maybe you just kissed a girl. Maybe somebody slept with 10 girls. It's the same thing. Say the same thing. Same thing. Maybe you drank vodka, somebody drank Guinness. Same thing. Say same thing. Same thing. Until you get to the point where you say, I have sinned, there is no remediation. And that was the difference between Saul and David. David, sinned. David was terrible, right? It was just so bad. How can a godly man stoop to that kind of level? But the difference between David and Saul, Saul told Samuel that, speak well of me in front of the people. And maybe you're here, you're putting on a face and a shade so that all of us can know that, oh, this is bro, or this is sister. That's not going to save you. You need to get to a point where you can say, I have what? Sin. And God will save you because he said, it, he said it in his word and I believe everything that God has written in his word is true. Amen. He says what? Let's say it together. First John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's what? It's not only, only limited to small sins. It's not only limited to big sins. All kinds of sins. If you confess it, he's faithful and just to forgive you. Do we have time for any questions? Do we? Yeah. Let us know. We have 10 minutes for questions. All right, so please, if you have any questions, raise your hands. We're not going to take uh, any three, three questions. Three. And then the rest, you please write it down. There'll be a question time. Oh, and three. Young question? Important question? We have one right here. We have Ruth right there. She raised her hand first, so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't and there's one over there? Okay. Is there Oh, you have a question? Okay, so first we're going to go with Ruth because she did raise her hand first, so let me pass the mic to her. Here you are. Okay, so when you were talking about self-aware and with Bathsheba and everything, so how was um, Bathsheba to be self-aware when it's her house and she's taking a shower? Oh, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, there are two parts to this question, and it depends on what angle you're looking at it. One is from the angle of, even if you're a deeper life sister and you dress in a long skirt and a three quarters top, and then put a turban without any of your hair being revealed, there will be one brother that will lust after you. Amen. And then, no, you ask a question. No, you, ask it. No, you can write it. The second part is this, um, and this is purely speculative, okay? Um, I believe what our sister and myself were trying to just say was to just try and draw a lesson from that and make it applicable to our lives today. Clearly, do you take showers outside? No. Okay. Where I come from, some women. <laughs> <laughs> and they call themselves as the Rapa. Yeah, and to my Rapa, right? So it depends on where you are, but that's, that doesn't apply to you, right? You can't blame uh, Bathsheba, you're right, you can't blame Bathsheba for taking a bath. I mean, that's her name. 
We're taking that back. <laughs> Outside. But the lesson that we're trying to draw out from that is that be aware of your environment. Okay, maybe, just maybe, Bathsheba knew. I mean, you could see David's palace from wherever you were, right? So it's a two-way thing. Whether she saw it or she didn't see it, uh, we don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll go and ask her. All right? But as a lady or as a guy, Right now, I, I even hear their sagging pants that they just show their buttocks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, or you are mooning people, you know. <laughs> but you just need to, I mean, these are things that as Christians we shouldn't even be doing at all. But you need to be aware of yourself. That was the lesson that we we're just trying to draw out. Be self aware, like check up, look around. Like, you know, sometimes you always ask, did this person really look in a mirror before they came out? Like, just. <laughs> Like, like maybe, you, I don't even know what example to use, but you're a Christian, you know, people, most of the time, if people will be sincere with themselves, they'll treat you the way that you appear. Okay, so let's be very sincere, and let's be aware of our environment. And the second question was over here. Okay, um, so you go ahead and I'll just give the microphone to her when she's ready. So, pardon me? Oh, yeah. No, 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 don't worry about it. You know, um, it's you're good. Okay. Praise God. Um, so, in regards to David and Bathsheba, this is not really a question, but it's just something that I picked up. You used the illustration of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. One thing I saw there was the tendency of falling prey to leadership. Mm -hmm. So, there is there is something prevalent in the church now where we honor leaders above God because we respect the person so much. And the, the thing is this. For example, you may be your pastor, your youth leader, and you'll see God using that person in a mighty way. So your own understanding is that this person is approved by God. So whatever, they would never, it's, they would, this person would never lead me into sin. And that's where we miss it because we're putting our faith in a man. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe that Sheba was doing because she had no idea that the king was calling her for that. But she came anyway. So in the sense, it may not be in this church, but perhaps somebody has encountered that where a leader in your church is pressuring you to do something that you know is wrong. You have to remember the Rechabites that the prophet told them drink. The prophet that speaks for God said drink. But they said, you know, our father told us that we're supposed to abstain. So that's something that it may be for somebody here. Just honor God above every man else. Respect everyone, respect everyone, but honor God. Praise God. Studies like biblical um, history or whatever, because we were wondering how exactly was the shower made? Like, was there um, was there something probably an empty space overhead? Because we were talking about being aware. So if she knew that around her was covered, she it's not like she was doing it on purpose because nobody else's house was probably built tall enough for them to be able to see her. You know what I'm saying? Typically. And, oh, so that's the, the first thing I wanted to my question. And then the second thing I wanted to say was the very beginning. The very beginning went to, and we discussed it a little bit, but I think that we should um, discuss it a little more about being idle. So the thing that started this whole mess from the first place was David David's idle. idle. He, wasn't, he wasn't doing what
what, what I do is when I study the Bible, I like to look at the historical facts, to check up with the Bible to make sure that everything's right. And if my understanding is correct, and I hope that what I'm about to say makes sense, when typically they didn't have like bathtubs, they had like in ground pools. So they would like dig into the ground and it would be like full, and they would probably have like stones that's digging down into the pool. And typically, inside of her kabod, of I guess her bath area. And typically, the how they would have the structure was they would have pillars. They would have like perhaps four to six pillars around the bath area. And they would have a canopy over it. So it wouldn't be that the, um, the bath area was like completely covered. It would have a canopy and there would be draping, but I don't know if the draping would be like, it would probably be like linen or like thin material where you would be able to see that. So I, when I'm saying things about like self-awareness, I don't think in reality, I don't think that Bathsheba was trying to seduce anybody. I really just think that she just wanted to take a bath. Because it was evening time that David woke up to go look outside. But I wanted to use that point about self-awareness that we ask people, men and women, because some men, their shirts be too tight and it's very comfortable for some deep people to look at. Huh? Deep V-necks. Deep V-neck. Yeah. <laughs> like, like your pectorals are just pushing up against the V-neck and then you're walking around and then like girls look, or like gray sweatpants. I heard something about that. I didn't really want to believe it because I don't have, <laughs> you know, I don't be looking, but you know, some people do. Like, it's your own, it's your own, whatever it is. And you said that, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, there was, there was something important that I wrote down that I wanted to um, share. There was something important that I wrote down that I wanted to share, and it was like, evading responsibilities is often the first step to spiritual decline. So, you have a responsibility as a Christian to upkeep your spiritual life and to go into battle every single day. When you evade that responsibility, let's think about it like this. Back then, when David was a young king, or when he was a young to be king, Saul was pursuing him, Saul was chasing after him, David could have easily found a way to kill Saul, but he did because that's not who he was. His heart was not a heart of bloodshed. He didn't want that to happen. He just waited for God to do what God was going to do best, which is take care of his people. And, but 40 or so years down the line, now the question of killing somebody's husband just to cover up his sin, he didn't even think twice about it. He went right on ahead and did it. It, it, evading responsibilities may seem like something small at the time, but later on down the line, you're going to pay very dearly for it. That's what I just wanted to add on to what you said. You guys made amazing points. And, uh, there's, there's one question. Huh? Um, if there are any contributions or questions, there is a really nice um, box in the back. Just for the. Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. The box. <laughs> There's a nice box. Um, yeah, I sister with the golden uh, head tie is raising it. Um, as you can see, exhibit one. So please um, drop your comments. They are really going to be helpful. We're going to put some of these comments anonymously on some of our pages um, after screening. 
right? Um, so please be a blessing to someone if God spoke to you in a certain way and you want to bless someone. Or if you have still pressing questions, please put them in there. There will be a question and answer section. And um, those questions, by God's grace, will be addressed. And so with that said, I want you to just bow down your heads. And um, however that the Holy Spirit spoke to you, be very sincere with yourselves. Um, this is not about who is right and who is wrong. This is about heaven and hell. This is about sin and righteousness. This is about a decision that you can make for your life today that would affect your eternity. We've talked about David and the choice that he made. Just being idle led to a cascade of, of very serious events that not just only affected his life, but other people around him. So just talk to God and just tell him to help you. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Ask God to give you strength in your Christian life to stand. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, this is another opportunity for you to do that.
and his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul when the spirit when the spirit takes over your soul when the spirit when the spirit takes over